Hi, I'm Kelly Anthony and thank you for joining me in the Anthony Kitchen. Today I'm going to share with you my Italian meatloaf recipe. It packs a punch of flavor and feeds a crowd. Let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is get my saute pan going over medium high heat with a tablespoon of olive oil. Now I'm going to dice up one red onion and one red bell pepper. red bell pepper are sauteing, I'm going to start chopping up two cloves of garlic super fine. When my pepper and onion have softened, I'll add my garlic and let that go for 30 seconds to a minute. Here I have some leftover French bread that's just been hanging out in my refrigerator and it's slightly stale, but that's okay. That's exactly what we want for our bread crumbs. So I'm just going to start tearing off little chunks and give it a whirl in my little food processor here. And I'm just going to pour some milk right over the top, about a quarter cup, and get in there and make sure that every crumb soaks that up, and then I'm just going to set this aside. My onion and garlic and pepper mixture has just finished on the stove top, and now we're going to get to some more add-ins. Here I've got some fresh basil and some fresh marjoram. And I'm just gonna give these a fine chop and add them to my mixture here while it's still warm so that they wilt down and those flavors meld together. So for the herbs in my Italian meatloaf, I'm gonna want about a tablespoon of basil. And I'm just gonna lay the leaves down, just one on top of the other on my cutting board. And then I'm gonna give them a nice roll, nice and tight, and come and cut them into little ribbons. That is called a chiffonade. But I'm gonna take those ribbons and I'm gonna cut them pretty fine. And now for the marjoram. Marjoram is sort of like a more mild, more delicate flavored oregano. It's not quite as spicy. So I'm just gonna take and pull the herbs right off the stem. Just mince it really fine. Okay, that's done. One of the most flavorful components I'm gonna add to my Italian meatloaf going to be these sun-dried tomatoes. And I've got three little tomatoes here and I'm just gonna give these a fine little dice. Add those to my mixture here. At this point, our breadcrumbs have been soaking long enough and I'm just going to squeeze out the excess milk and add the breadcrumbs to my veggie mixture. Next, we're gonna break into two eggs. Give these a nice little whisk. Mix this up. Add my eggs. So I'm going to add two teaspoons of salt to my mixture here. One teaspoon of pepper. One 15 ounce can of fire roasted tomatoes drained. And now I'll just add this mixture to my ground beef and mix it really well with my hands. We are almost done and now we only have one final ingredient to add to our Italian meatloaf, and that is eight ounces of Fontina cheese. Now, I'm just cutting this into teeny tiny little cubes, and what that's gonna do in our meatloaf is it's going to create these melty little pockets of cheese in every single bite. Just gonna fold these cheese cubes into my meatloaf mixture. I've got a heavy duty baking sheet here lined with nonstick foil and I'm just going to transfer my mixture here to the baking sheet and form it into a loaf. Now for the very last touch, the sauce. For the sauce, we're going to need two cups of ketchup, four tablespoons brown sugar, four teaspoons Worcestershire, two teaspoons balsamic vinegar, and a pinch of kosher salt, and a crack of black pepper. Now we're just gonna get those ingredients all mixed up and pour this over our meatloaf. Now this is going in a 325 degree oven for one hour or until the internal temperature reaches 170 degrees. My meatloaf has come out of the oven, and as you can see, there are juices and sauce everywhere. 
and we are not going to waste a drop of that. I let my meatloaf cool for about 15 minutes before I came in and cut it into my serving portions and transferred it to my serving dish. We are going to lift up this nonstick foil and drain all those juices and sauce into our saucepan here. And before I transfer this to the stovetop, I am going to remove quite a bit of the fat. Now I'm just going to come in with my whisk and stir like crazy. Place this on the stovetop over medium high heat and bring it just to a boil. Now let's face it, everybody always wants more topping on their meatloaf. So now I've just taken that sauce, transferred it to my serving pitcher, and my guests can help themselves to as much as they like. Thank you so much for joining me in the Anthony Kitchen today. I really hope that you guys will enjoy this recipe. Bye.